Is anybody grateful for who God gave us as our a shepherd in the house? And he kept the doors open to continue to build and edify his sheep all last year. And now, through God, he's teaching us how to expand our territory so we can represent his goodness more effectively. Amen? So come on, give God some praise on the first day of the new year for Bishop Tony Samuels as he brings the word of God. Hallelujah. Man, y'all look good. You can be seated, amen. Hallelujah. Excited, amen. Kicking off a brand new year. How many people know that God has some things scheduled for your life this year? There's some things that's on God's calendar that he wants to bring to pass in your life in 2022. If you can believe him, you can receive it. Amen? Amen. But I'm going to continue this morning on what we started uh, on Friday night, 2022, the year of expansion. And I'm going to be ministering this morning on change your view, change your destiny. Change your view, change your destiny. Now let's open up the scripture with our passage in Isaiah 54, verses 1 through 4. And we're going to read it out of the Passion Translation. And then we'll go before the Lord in prayer. The Bible says, Rejoice with singing, you barren one. You who had never given birth, burst into a song of joy and shout. You have never been in labor, for the deserted wife will have more children than the married one, says Yahweh. An increase is coming, so enlarge your tent and add extensions to your dwelling. Hold nothing back. Make the tent ropes longer and the pegs stronger. You will increase and spread out in every direction. Your sons and your daughters will conquer nations and revitalize desolate cities. And I added this verse to it because we're going to be ministering from this verse today. And it's verse 4. Do not fear, for your shame shall be no more. Do not be embarrassed, for you will not be disgraced. You will forget the inadequacy you felt in your youth, and you will no longer remember the shame of your widowhood. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you this morning for your word. Your word is alive sharper, powerful than a two-edged sword. Father God, I thank you will go and get the job done. Father God, I thank you that the body of Christ here at the lighthouse will be edified, strengthened, built up in the inner man. Father God, I thank you that we will leave out change. Father God, I ask you that you will give me your words, your words of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father God, I ask you to give me utterance to open my mouth boldly and speak as you would want me to speak. And Father God, I pray that your people hear your voice in my voice. Father God, I pray not just for information, but let it be an impartation of your spirit to bring the grace of God. So we'll not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So Father, I thank you for what you're going to do in advance in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, say amen. Amen. For the sake of those that weren't here on Friday night, the word for 2022 is the year of expansion. The word is speaking to us individually and I believe corporately here at the ministry. There are things this coming year that the Lord wants to expand in our lives. There are people that have been waiting for more and you have almost been suffocating spiritually. The Lord says this is your year for that supernatural breakthrough to come to pass in your life. I looked up that word expansion. It means to expand, means to increase in extent, size, volume, scope, to spread, to stretch out, to unfold. Amen? Something you must understand that the expansion that we're talking about is a supernatural manifestation of the power of Almighty God. It's not about your power. It's about his power operating in your life. What the Lord is telling us is to get into position to receive. And all this word is doing, how many people know the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So whatever area of the word that's being preached, the faith to bring that to pass is coming into your spirit. 
And listen, if you walk it out, hold on to it, and expect it, it will begin to show up and begin to produce results in your life. Amen? How many people know that God don't want you just to talk about the word, not just hear the word, not just read the word? He wants the word to show up with tangible evidence in your life so you can touch it and proclaim and bring in it as a testimony of the goodness of Almighty God in your life. Amen? Somebody say, we serve a good God. That wants to use your life to show off his glory and his goodness. Now, let's do a quick review of Friday night and some of the things. Uh, uh, Brother Ellie did an awesome job of kind of putting them out there, but I just uh, uh, expand a little bit more on it. Three things the Lord told us we must do to prepare for the expansion that he's bringing. The, the first one was we got to change our tone in 2022. No more murmuring and complaining. No more victim mentality. No more, oh, poor me. No more sad song. God wants you to have a song of rejoicing, a song of victory, right in the face of utter defeat, right in the stack of bills. God wants you to rejoice and celebrate his goodness because your tone is going to attract the expansion of God. The presence of God and miracles never show up where there's a sad song. There's rejoicing, there's faith, and it creates an atmosphere for the supernatural power of God to begin to show up in your life. So in 2022, we got to watch out of the tone that we're setting in our lives. Amen. Get up in the morning and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will, my God, Pastor, no, I don't feel like it. You got to get past your little feelings in 2022 and get into the spirit, amen, and do it by the spirit. Do it by faith, and then your feelings will begin to line up with the faith of God, amen? But in 2022, we got to change our tone. He told the woman that was barren to sing. He told her to rejoice because I'm about to do something in your life, amen? The next thing was to enlarge. That means to increase the capacity. Enlargement is a preparation word. What are you preparing for is an indicator of what you are expecting. Let me say that again. What you are preparing for is an indicator of what you are expecting. I'm not, I'm not expecting no bad stuff this year. I'm expecting nothing but the goodness of God to show up in every area of my life. I'm believing to walk in divine health divine prosperity, divine abundance. I'm, I'm believing to, uh, the, the ministry is going to soar and increase and be blessed. We're going to be able to reach even more lives than we did last year that God's going to do. I'll do so. I'm not expecting, I'm not believing for a sad story in 2023. Some of y'all need to turn the news off, amen, and shut that foolishness off because we're not subject to the bad news we're subject to the good news the gospel of jesus christ somebody said tell me some good news that's why you ain't going to hear no bad news when you come to this church i'm going to edify you and build you up i'm going to shake the sadness the oppression and the depression off your life and tell you to rise up and give god praise right in the midst of everything that you're going through and he will turn your your ashes he will give you beauty for your ashes So we need to enlarge. Don't look at the news. I'm enlarging. I'm preparing for, for a, something big to come into my life. Next one, he tells her to stretch her curtains. In 2022, you're going to have to get the slack out of your life. Those ears that have been loose, you're going to have to tighten up on. Some of y'all need to reclaim your vision back. The Bible says uh, without a vision, the people cast off restraint. When you have a vision, you don't have slack in your life because you have direction for your life. And that vision filters foolishness out of your life. That's why if you're talking crazy, get out of here. Amen. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Amen. I don't want to hear what we can't do or will you hear what's going on. I don't want to hear none of that. Get out of here with that. Amen. I want to hear what God's going to do. I want to hear some good news. Amen. And I, I want something that's going to feed and give me fuel to accomplish and to get to the vision that God has for my life. Amen. People are either sinking you or they're lifting you up. 
And you got to be examined this year who's been sinking me, who's been rubbing off bad on me, and who's been edifying me, who's been building me up. Who do I feel bigger uh, around when I go around them, amen? And I'm going to hang around with those people. So we're going to get the slack out in 2022. We're going to tighten up. We're going to tighten up on our prayer life, our devotion time, our word time. We're going to cut some TV shows out and give that time to the Lord. Amen. We're going to sharpen our spiritual ear because there's some divine instructions that God wants to give you. And some of y'all's hearing has been dull because you've been listening to the tone of the world. You've been listening to, you've been uh, binge watching Netflix. You need to turn that on, clean your, your spiritual ears out because God wants to give you some divine instructions. You've been looking over here. God said the blessing is over there. But if you got spiritual wax in your ear, you're not going to hear the divine instructions of God to get you to the place that he has for your life now let's establish the truth of expansion with two more witnesses you know you can't establish truth with just one witness you need two or three witnesses pull up first chronicles 4 9 through 10 is it God's will for me to expand And the Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that your hand might be with me, and that you will keep me from evil, that it might not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. You see that? <laughs> now this guy got a, a bad name from his mother because she bore him in sorrow. But this ain't got nothing to do with your mother. This ain't got nothing to do with a label. This ain't got nothing to do with a name because that cannot block you from the access of Almighty God to go boldly before the throne of grace and ask God to bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, expand my tents. It's been nice, God. I'm grateful, but I know you got way more in store for my life. So I'm just going to be humble enough to ask you something that other people are afraid to ask you. Sometimes we're afraid to ask God for what we really want in our heart, amen? But you can't pray accurately and if you lose sight of your desires. The Bible says whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. You know you desire to have more. Stop playing a religious game, amen? You know that, that this ain't enough. This, this thing falling apart. God got way more than this. This bike is nice, but I'd rather be driving. Come on, man. You're going to have to get real in 2022 because God knows what is really going on with you. And J-Bass said, I'm just going to be bold enough. I know I got a bad label. I know they're calling me a son of sorrow, but I'm going to believe God to break out of my name, break out of the label, break out, and my situation is not going to match the label that they tried to put on me. Amen? God, break me out of this. And God granted him which he requested do and we know beyond a shadow of doubt if god answered that 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 is the will of god let me say that again that that means that it's the will of god that is the will of god once you know the will of god you don't have to no longer confer with flesh and blood you don't have to ask me about it you don't have to ask mommy about it daddy about it. you got the word of god and that settles all arguments all debates that is the will of god finalized in heaven and settled on the earth
Pull up Psalms 18, 17 through 19. The Bible says, he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. This is somebody that was in a battle, fighting enemies that were stronger than himself. And the Bible said that God delivered him and set him free, but God just didn't deliver him and leave him hanging. The Bible said that God brought him into a large place. I'm going to take you out of a place of battle, and I'm going to put you in a place of blessing. It's not going to be a small blessing. It's going to be a large blessing. Amen? A large place. You know, if the Bible says large, it's not like my large or your large. I'm talking about the large of God, the God that created the heavens and the earth and the earth that we're spinning around on. That God said, put large in that scripture. Then I delivered him out of the mess, out of battles, and brought him into a large place. What do they call them things? Tiny houses? I mean, that's cute, hey, man. We've been playing around looking at them. That's cute. That's nice. But, oh my God, this is tight. Anybody in the bathroom? Hey, man. Only one bathroom in this thing. Tiny house. Hey, Amen. No, God said, I'm not going to put you in a tiny house. I'm going to put you in a large place. In, the, in my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you so. I'm not a shack God. I'm a mansion God. <laughs> now let's get to it today. To see expansion in 2022, you're going to have to change the way you see yourself. To see God expand you on the outside, you're going to have to expand the way you see yourself on the inside. The Bible says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's not about what I think about you. It's not about what your boss thinks about you that can affect your life. It's really about what you think about yourself that is creating the reality that a lot of y'all have been walking in. And God said, before I send expansion, you'll see by the end why this is so important. I got to change the way you view yourself. Because some of you guys don't see yourself the way that I see you, says the Lord. And how can two walk together except they be in agreement? So you can't have a different picture that I have when you call me, amen, oh, man, Tony said, amen, blessed man, amen, and you see yourself as not blessed. No, God said we got to have the same picture in 2022. Pull up Numbers 13. We're going to read verses 30 through 33. Numbers 13. Verse 30 says, and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went with him, <laughs> these guys, I might talk about them in one second, hold on. But the men that went with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched the children of Israel, saying, The land which you we have gone to search out is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that saw in it are men of great stature. But it said the men that were with Caleb said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. This ain't one of my points, but I'll throw it in there. In 2022, you're going to have to listen 
to the responses of the people that are around your life when you begin to declare what God is going to do in your life. And if they start saying all these things about why you can't do it, why it's not going to work out, you need to get those people out of your life in 2022 because they're going to hear, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I serve a God with unlimited resources. What are you talking about? We can't do it. We can do anything we want. Now, I'm not saying you can't have, all right, man, but did you consider this constructive? Amen. So you can go in accurately and get information. I'm talking about doubters that just don't believe God. Amen. Don't believe God can do it for them and don't believe God can definitely do it for you. Them people you need to get out of your life in 2022 because they're going to try to, the devil's going to use them to hinder you. He said, it said the report that they gave, listen, was an evil report. Whenever somebody said that God can't do something, that's evil in the eyes of God. God can't heal. That's evil. God can't prosper. That's evil. God can't deliver you. That's evil. God can't give you that job. That's evil. That's an evil report. They brought up an evil report. And they said they searched out the land. The land which we have gone to search out is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. And the people we saw there are men of great stature. Look at your name say, so what? <laughs> the bigger they come, the harder they fall. Verse 33, and we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So let me ask you something. What was the real reason a whole generation was not able to possess the promised land that God had given them? It's right there. We were in our own sight, how we see ourselves. We seen ourselves as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. They did not see themselves the way that God saw them. God saw them as giant slayers. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. The distance you need to travel in your mentality is from a grasshopper mentality to a giant slayer mentality. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But the Lord said you're dealing with a strong man this morning. The mental stronghold was so powerful, it stopped the whole generation from attaining what the Lord had for their lives. How do you view yourself? What do you see when you look in the mirror? How do you feel about yourself? Not the facade. Not the clothes. I'm talking about how do you feel about yourself, ladies? No makeup. <laughs> Guys, not dressed up. How do you feel about yourself? How you feel about yourself can no longer be based on outside stuff. It's got to be based on internal stuff. What's amazing was... This is a type and shadow of deliverance where God delivered Israel out of Egypt, brought them through this wilderness, and was trying to take them into the promised land. So Pharaoh represented the devil, the taskmaster, that God was able to deliver and set them free in one night. That's why people overrate uh, spiritual warfare as far as the devil is concerned. 
The greater warfare is what the, 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 the impact of what the devil did for you, did to you when you were in, amen, his camp. And the damage that he did to your soul, your perception, the way you see yourself, that's the stuff that they carry into the world. It wasn't a devil on their back. It was their wrong self-perception of their self that kept them stuck in the wilderness. One night, God dealt with the devil. 40 years, he couldn't get away, couldn't break down that mental stronghold that the devil had built up in their minds. And that was the barrier. That was the wall that the enemy would, that, that, that enemy probably in, in Egypt saying, they ain't going nowhere. My stronghold still set up. <laughs> Go around that wilderness, get right up to the promised land. They ain't going to be able to possess it because they still got a stronghold in their mind. They do not see themselves the way that God sees them. They still see themselves as slaves. How do you feel when you walk in a room with very successful people? Do you feel Comfortable or uncomfortable? Do you feel easy or uneasy? And you're looking for an exit. I remember when the Lord began to deal with me. And I, I, and I remember I came back to the ministry and I was just dealing with condemnation and guilt. And there was a dear brother that was a staff in the ministry. He took me into his office and I, I came right out the yard and I remember I was all sweaty dirty white t-shirt and I just like and I remember I walked in the office and I felt so unworthy and I was like man I said man I, I probably need to get, get going he said no nah, just sit relax just relax enjoy the AC <laughs> what's the rush you know but but what he didn't realize I was struggling with my self-image I didn't feel worthy enough to be sitting in that office I was measuring it by the way I look by the way the mistakes I had made and, and I was seeing myself in the light of that and not through the light of how God see me. So I felt inadequate and I wanted to get out of the office. I wanted to go back to the yard. It's not the people. It's how you view yourself. You are going to have to wage war against yourself, the voice of the enemy, and the voice of others. This morning, people will be set free if you want to be free and free to receive the expansion in 2022. And I shared a little bit about my personal testimony, but this is an area that God had to really deal with me because I believe if I didn't deal with this, I would not be walking in this call right now. Matter of fact, pull up that scripture before I get into this. Look at Galatians 1.10. Galatians 1.10, Paul said, am I now trying to win the favor and approval of men or of God? Or am I seeking to please someone? If I were still trying to be popular with men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. So part of my uh, uh, preparation wasn't about preaching. It was about seeing if you're going to be, uh, be a, a God pleaser or a man pleaser. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't be both. You might be able to juggle it for a little while, but eventually pleasing one is going to offend the other. So I'd rather please God and offend man than please man and offend God. <laughs> so God said, I got to deliver you and make sure that you're only looking for my approval, my endorsement. So when I ask you to be bold and confront people, you won't be shaken and be moved by what they think about you. You'll be surprised how people's opinions have changed about me when I had to confront them. Amen. You don't really know, amen, if you're in agreement with somebody unless you have a disagreement with them. He's nice, Pastor Tony, as long as I'm giving you what you want. But the minute I call you on the carpet and say, you need to stop this. We're not going to allow this. This cannot be. Oh, no, nah, you can't. Oh, I thought I was your pastor. Oh, I can't correct. What kind of pastor are you looking for? You got junk all in your life and I can't speak to it and bring correction into your life? I'm not your pastor then. 
I'm leaving the church. Well, God, you, were my, you know what? You were an unsubmitted vessel, amen? Your submission was conditional, amen? It was based on as long as I was giving you and fulfilling your list, but the minute I said, no, we can't do it, oh, man. <laughs> You're my pastor. Pastor Hank was my pastor. Amen. Now, the first time I took a stupid pill, when I came back, I learned submission. Amen. Amen. I was sharing with some of the staff. I mean, he used to, when I got married, he said, man, I don't really think you should move off the ground. I think you need to stay here. It's a lot to be able to uh, take on a new family and a, a new uh, daughter and a new responsibilities and, and then to juggle the cares of the world on the outside. I think it's going to be a little too much for you. So let's transition. Why don't you stay in a trailer? Whoa, that wasn't my plan. My plan was get married and get out of here. <laughs> but, but you're my pastor, and I'm submitted to you. And because I submitted to you, I'm about to finally step into another phase of my life and marry the woman of my dreams. And now I'm going to all of a sudden stop listening to you when it's listening to you that got me up to this point. I don't want to listen. You know why they don't want to listen? Because they already got their blessing. People listen more when they ain't got nothing. But the minute God starts adding to their life and they got a wifey, they got a little car, a little house, and you got more options, it's easy to rise up and bump the authority over your life. Now I got a car, I can go to another church. Before I couldn't go to a church, so I was stuck at the layout. But now I got options, and now the real you has showed up. That's who you were the whole time. <laughs> that was not in my notes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if you're watching, I am your pastor. God didn't get it wrong. You got it wrong. Come back. Submit yourself under the hand of God that he may exalt you and do see. Stop being prideful. We don't care about that. I really am their pastor. I really am. Amen. <laughs> they just have not accepted it. Amen. See, people mix me and Bishop up because we're two different personalities. But we have the same standard. And we always reach the same uh, decision, the same outcome. Amen. If Bishop didn't tolerate it, I'm not going to tolerate Now, I might give you a little more grace to turn around where he was more cut and dry. But listen, if you don't line up, it's going to be hit the road too. I, I told you guys, I told my wife, I said, I said you know what I, I do? Uh, under Bishop, people had to, because the way he carried himself, he kept people in check. So with me, I'm like more laid back. So, But what it does is that's who they were when he was here. But I provide an environment where the real them that can come out so they think they can control me and dominate me and don't realize that the same spirit that was in him is in me. And, this, and the spirit of the Lord is the governor of the ministry. And if you come against me, you're coming against God's spirit. So God had to take me through a process of being free from the opinions of men. I get it when I'm in, the, in this position now. Can I see the pastor? And I walk out. They're expecting some older guy or older looking guy. I mean, I'm older, but older looking guy. Amen. And like trying to size me up. Amen. I love it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But, 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 but listen. I had to get delivered from people that I could walk in a room with highly successful people and not feel intimidated, that I could kick it with the president of the United States and not feel less than. I don't care how much money you got. I know who I am in God. I got an identity that's worth more than money. 
So there's no intimidation. I had to grow up out of that. What God would have me do, he would have me, but where I wanted to uh, just shrink back, God said, no, rise up. You can't live in that old identity. I need you to rise up and walk in your new identity. I need you to be bold. Sometimes people are mistaken uh, uh, boldness for arrogance. I'm not arrogant. I'm just bold in who I am in Christ. There's a difference. I can tell you this, if God did not raise me up out of that, I would not be running this ministry right now. The devil would have sent men in here to override me because I would have seeked their approval over the approval of God. And thank God I got a relationship with God. So the voice of the good shepherd was able to rise up on the inside of me and said, do not change the order of this ministry. But if it was just who they thought I was, their wrong perception Amen. I would just been a figurehead pastor with no authority. This stronghold has its foundation in fear. It all originated from Satan's fear of you. Look at your name. Says Satan's afraid of you. He had a, to devise a weapon to stop you from your birth. The weapon was a lie. Let me say it again. The weapon that he used for you was a lie. Before you receive expansion in 2022, you're going to have to reject the lie that the enemy created about you. Everyone in this room has had to battle or is battling the lie of the enemy that he created about you. Now, this is the part of the text that we are dealing with. Isaiah 54, verse 4. Let's look at it again. The Lord says to this woman that's about to give birth, that's about to expand, do not fear, for your shame shall be no more. Do not be embarrassed, for you will not be disgraced. You will forget the inadequacy you felt in your youth, and you will no longer remember the shame of your widowhood. Hmm. Somebody say shame. It affects the way you see yourself. And because of that, it holds you back where you should be bold and confident. You shrink back and you become shy and timid because you believe more in the lie than the truth of the word of God. Sometimes people believe in you more than you believe in yourself. And it's because they don't see what you see they see you in the image of God, and your image has been tainted by the lie of the enemy. This is why people cannot handle success, and they sabotage it. They feel unworthy. It's too good to be true, so it must be wrong, so I better kill it. And because they feel unworthy to have success, because they see themselves in their own image, instead of going from faith to faith and glory to glory, they sabotage the success that God has given in their life because they feel unworthy and shameful to be experiencing it. Amen? There ain't no house on planet Earth that you're not worthy enough to live in. There's not no car that they make in no dealership amen that you're not worthy to drive there's no clothing that they got in any store that you're not worthy to wear amen god didn't die for a car god didn't die for clothes god didn't die for a house he died for you showing that you are the most valuable thing not stuff We have to deal with it this morning. Shame means a painful sensation excited by a consciousness of guilt or having done something which, which injures reputation. That which brings reproach and degrades a person in the estimation of others. Disgrace. Now listen, don't confuse guilt with shame. Guilt is an awareness of failure against a standard. Shame is a sense of failure before the eyes of someone. In other words, guilt is about disobedience to a law or code 
But shame is how I perceive others see me or how I see myself. There's people here, you're walking in shame. And the shame is attached to your memory of things that you did in the past. People have knowledge of it, and you view your, you, you, you pick up, amen. And listen, I got, let me say this. Mm. I don't know, am I supposed to release this now, Lord? Let me do it anyway, man. God is taking the shame off the lighthouse in 2022. Now, I'm going to explain that. You're like, the shame off the lighthouse. <laughs> I guarantee you there's people that's supposed to be in this church, and I know because Bishop used to tell me about them, but they don't come here because they feel to be, they feel ashamed to be connected with people that came out of our background. They'll come visit. They'll come say, good job, Pastor Tony. But as far as diving in, submitting to the house of God, they don't go in and they won't tell you this, but the reason is they're ashamed. Because the way they view us. I have people come and say, Pastor Tone, I think Brother Philip, some brothers that's been here, that's been around, and say, ain't no church in Tampa got anything better than a lighthouse. So why ain't this place packed out then? God said, I'm going to remove the shame, the residue, amen, that the enemy that has tried to put on your name because of the people I've called to this ministry to deliver and set them free. You would think that the, the body of Christ would celebrate this part of the body because God is digging people out that were at the bottom of the pit, scraping them up with all his power, all his glory. You think they would be in here celebrating the awesome power of Almighty God. This place should be packed out. We should have our campuses all over, but the shame is going to be removed in 2022. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not ashamed of my testimony. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ that delivered me and set me free. I'm not ashamed of a jail cell. I'm not ashamed of drug addiction. I'm not ashamed of what God delivered me out of. That's not who I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It ain't about who's the pastor because Bishop Fur was the youngest bank president of Tampa. It's the shame, amen? It's the shame. And God said, I'm removing the shame in 2022 off this ministry, amen? Off, off the perception in the Tampa Bay community. We're not just a bunch of drug addicts. We're sons and daughters of the Most High God that are walking in our inheritance. Blessed going in, blessed coming out. Receiving, amen, from God. Hallelujah! 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 God said, oh, Baron, I'm going to deal with the shame before this increase comes in your life. I'm going to tear this shame away so you can receive. And as we get deeper into the, into the uh, chapter, you're going to see what God does to this lady that was barren, that was carrying shame, how he ripped it off her and began to dress her and, and put jewelry on her and then clean her up and make her his masterpiece. Hallelujah. 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 God said we're dealing with this because you're going to step in to your, 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 your expansion this year. 
And I don't want that shame to rise up. Amen. I got to give you this point and then we're going to have an altar call. We got to have an altar call. We got to have an altar call. We got to have an altar call. There has to be a response to this word from you. Amen. If you don't deal with it, you can't get to the wealthy place. Just like being in a room with success makes you feel uneasy, you'll feel uneasy when God moves you into the promised land. And you'll find a way to get out of it or a way to destroy it. Because you don't feel worthy. You don't feel comfortable. You don't feel like you deserve it. Amen? Now I understand why they wanted to return to Egypt and not advance to the promised land. Because they did not believe that they were worthy of the promised land. Sometimes there is a comfort in what we came out of. Amen. There's a comfort. Sometimes there's a comfort in being a slave. I already know how the day is going to look. I already know how people are going to treat me. I already know how to deal with rejection over here. And God said, I want you to come out of that. In 2022, you're not a slave, and I need you to cross over into your new identity. How many people know when you wear something you haven't wore before, you got to, uh, what they call it, break it in, amen? You might, you're going to have to break in this new identity. It's going to feel a little awkward, but just keep walking with it. Keep believing. Look in the mirror, amen, and begin to see yourself the way that God sees you, amen? And then what that will do when God brings you into expansion, it will root you and ground you you into the place that God has for your life. Amen. I'm still here because I'm rooted and grounded in my identity in Christ Jesus. Last point. A lie only has power over your life if you accept it and believe it. How do you break its power? You reject it and refuse to believe it. That voice comes, you in that room, and that voice comes, you ain't supposed to be in here. All these successful people. Be like, can y'all give me a second? I'll be right back. Amen. Go to the bathroom. Devil, you a liar. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm a son of the most high God. I am royalty. I'm going to speak back to you. I ain't going to let you speak to me no more and begin to sabotage my success. God called me to be in that room with them people because I got something to put on the table. Amen. I'm not going to feel inferior. I'm not going to feel less than. I'm going to rise up in boldness into the man and woman that God has called me to be. And you're going to have to reject it. I reject those labels. I reject it. I refuse to believe it. I don't believe it. I believe what God says. You guys get this song ready. Uh, Eddie James no longer slaves. Listen, you owe it to yourself. And your family to stop being a slave and become a son and daughter of the Most High God. In 2022, the expansion is not for the slave. It's for the sons and daughters of the Most High God. And sometimes you can be a son or daughter, but you're still trapped in a slave mentality. God said, I, even though you, that's your identity, if you don't come out of that mentality, you're going to sabotage the success that I have for your life. Come out of it. Amen. Stand to your feet. Let's play the song. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. 
still on my feet I can't For I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. Step into your identity. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family, your blood. Flows through my veins. Oh, I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I'm no
shame gone guilt gone yes, no condemnation a child free of God. Yes, washed in the blood I of the lamb washed in the blood of child. Jesus washed in the blood of Jesus washed in the blood of Jesus receive a washing receive a cleansing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet receive a cleansing a washing of the blood of Jesus fresh father let a fresh anointing come upon your people right now he'll split the fresh for you right now fresh fresh he's a good good father fresh in you are a fresh child touch from him you are a child of God yes Thank you, Jesus. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. Let me just pray this prayer over you. Father, right now. Thank you that shame is gone. Guilt is gone. Labels are gone. Intimidation is gone. Low self-esteem is gone. We're going to look when we talk people in their eyes. We reject the lie this morning and we accept the truth of the identity that you have given us so we can receive that inheritance. Father, I bless your people. Seal this word in their hearts. I cover them with the blood of Jesus now and I declare victory and freedom in 2022 like never before in Jesus mighty name hallelujah let's give the Lord some praise hallelujah glory sweet Jesus hallelujah amen well we got one more thing to do receive the Lord's table and we're going to receive tithes and offerings for the church and seal the deal amen on this awesome first Sunday of 2022 Amen. Ushers, take your place. Let that uh, child of God play, uh, Brother John. Just have it a little low, just playing. Start it from the top. Let's go out of here as sons and daughters. I'm your son. Abba. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies to long my fear. I'm gone. At the same time, if you need an envelope, raise your hands. I'm no longer slave to fear. For I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. Amen. Ushers, you can release the people. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. Oh. For I am a 
Anyone here this morning, you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Anyone here, you're not born again, and you want to make that decision this morning to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Anybody? Be bold enough to raise your hand. All y'all say? <laughs> say, yeah. I like that. Yeah. If you're saved, raise your hands. All right. All right. Amen. Just making sure. Amen. Hallelujah. Want us all walking out of here as sons and daughters, no longer slaves, right? Amen. Starts with accepting Jesus. Amen. But on this first Sunday, we receive and honor the Lord by receiving his table, which represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the foundation of our faith. Amen. And we come back to that place this morning, and everything that he's going to do this year comes from that place. Amen. If you need healing in your body this morning, this bread, if you believe it, you can receive what Jesus did at Calvary, amen, over 2,000 years ago, that he took all sickness and disease on his body. And you can receive supernaturally right now healing of God. God, I receive your healing in my body right now. Amen? Let's take the bread. Amen. 
And with the juice that represents the blood, the word that was coming to me while I was standing up here is what he started, he will complete. So with expansion comes the renewing of dreams and visions. As you discover your, your identity and your, your boldness rises in your identity in Christ, he's going to enliven those dreams and those visions that you thought were lost, that you thought were unreachable, that you thought you weren't good enough to fulfill. And you know what? You're not, except the blood. It's only in, by, and through the blood of Jesus and the power of Holy Spirit. Amen? And through that, as we partake today, receive the reviving of those dreams, the reviving of those visions, the reviving of the life of Christ on the inside of you, the true identity of who you are in and through him. Amen? Let's partake. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tom. Amen. Well, listen, we declared already on Friday that we're blessed going into this year. We're blessed throughout. We'll be blessed coming out on the other side. Raise your hands to heaven as we speak the blessing over your life. Father, I thank you for your people gathered here as the body of Christ. Father God, to honor you by not forsaking the assembling of themselves together, you said that even and yet more as the day of Christ approaches. So Father God, let a special blessing come upon their lives. And Father God, let them, I declare that they're blessed going in this week, blessed throughout the week, and they'll be blessed coming out of the week. So Father God, we declare it now. And Father God, we thank you for the expansion in our lives individually and corporately here at the Lighthouse in 2022. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed.